So we're back for commercial, just setting up for a, uh, a bonus donation. You guys raised $10,000 for this run, so uh, here it is. We're going to see Cosmo do a any percent run of, uh, of uh, Ocarina of Time, just to see how fast it really can go. Alright, front mics are live again. Alright. Oh. Yeah, so who's this guy on the uh, trailer? Shout out to last year's hat. Well, yeah. Is somebody in chat asking for what's your PB? Uh, I've done 518 on the 100%. This one we got trolled really hard with the fish. Oh good. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and we did add yeah, and Dempe. And I did add the blind folded yeah, right, yeah. for a couple minutes there. Uh, an extra heart piece in there for you. Yeah. So, uh, what was the second place for the final day? So I mean, we haven't had anything new come in, so it should still be the same one. Beef jerky, so it's B F J E R K Y, all caps. Wait, what is it? B F jerky. BF jerky. Good. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that menu moves really good. Right, yeah. Three, yeah. two, yeah. one, yeah. go. Oh. Alright. Uh, awesome. up everyone. Uh, you just yeah, watched Runner Guy destroy a hundred percent. Uh collect everything in the game. This is the speedrun where you beat the game as fast as possible. And it's kind of been quite a story how it's come to be this way. Uh, years ago in like two thousand five, it was mostly natural route. You would just kinda go through the game you know, in the order intended. And then people realized, uh, oh, well, we could probably skip the lens of truth if we, like, memorize the wasteland. So then you could, like, skip the lens of truth and, you know, get through the Shadow Temple without the lens. And then more things got discovered. And eventually, um, this guy named Akrite found th this thing called the Trial Skip, where you push this statue against the wall, and you can get through the wall and get up Ganon's tower without beating the six like mini dungeons and uh, we call those the trials and that was kind of like the first major skip in the game and shortly after like there's a whole group of people all trying to discover stuff at the same time they were all in the speed demos archives forums uh, there's basically like ocarina time threads that have like hundreds and hundreds of pages that go way back and like there would be new posts every single day <laughs> i remember i was like really ex i was back, back then i was just like a lurker I was just like, man, like, this is cool stuff. I would just like read the threads every day, like, oh, what are they going to find next? Because, you know, it's like such a cool game, and I'm like really fascinated personally, and I know a lot of people here are as well, of like the huge number of like things you can, like the interesting things you can do in different games, and, like seeing what's actually possible without cheating. And um, it's been quite a ride. In 2006, uh, Kazooie. Uh, he's from Finland, and he found a ton of stuff, including Shadow Temple Early, which, uh, when you get to the Shadow Temple Early, that was something on its own, just because you can get hover boots and start destroying the other dungeons with the hover boots, which you're not supposed to have yet. And then, uh, after that, <laughs> uh, people realize, wait, if I beat the Shadow Temple Early and I beat the Spirit Temple, it gives me the light arrows. So that actually skips three dungeons. Uh, you'd still have to go through the Forest Temple to get the bow. <laughs> And for a while, the game was kind of like that. Beat the child dungeons, uh, do Shadow Temple early, and then beat the Spirit Temple as well and get the bow. And so that skipped a couple dungeons plus the trials. And then later on, uh, <laughs> later on, a bunch of stuff happened all at once. Like, this is where it was all, like, the glory days. Like, everyone's going, like, going in full, like, trying to find all sorts of crazy stuff. And Kazooie also found this glitch called Bottle Adventure which let you catch different bottles, or catch stuff in your bottle, and <laughs> you can get a bottle over where your sword is supposed to be. And it's a really crazy glitch where instead of a sword, you have a bottle, and you catch stuff, and every time you catch stuff, it writes the value of the item you catch like somewhere else that's not supposed to be. So you could literally catch bugs with a certain <coughs> item, and it would write the medallions into your inventory without ever going to the dungeons. So then that was like the fastest way to beat the game. <laughs> and then uh, Kazooie and AKA found this skip called the Door of Time skip. It's one of the most famous skips in all the video games. That skip skips the child dungeons. This skips the entire child section. And so uh, using all that stuff together, uh, basically, uh, you would just 
skip all the child dungeons, go adult, and then go through the trading sequence to like catch stuff in bottles, <laughs> which would write stuff into your inventory. And you would write the lullaby, which lets you get the magic. Then you'd write the medallions, and then you'd also write a quiver. And so with those items, uh, you could shoot the light arrow at Ganondorf to defeat Ganondorf and then get to the end of the game. And like for a really long time, we were like, that's it, man. Like, there's no way we can <laughs> there's no way we can break this game anymore. There's a bottleneck at Ganondorf. Like you have to <laughs> like you have to get past Ganondorf, so you need light arrows with magic, usable magic, and a quiver with arrows. So like there's nothing else you can do. And it actually was kind of complicated because there was actually a lot of different um, routes involving like what's actually the quickest way to go about that and it did take quite a while there's like different discoveries found like getting to the pond without using the hook shot was necessary and like there's a lot of stuff that was discovered along the way but uh eventually last year uh someone named christian f23 he was in the water temple and he was trying to skip the cutscene after beating the water temple and what ended up happening was, for one frame, it was possible to skip the cutscene, and no one had realized it before. And he was like, wow, I wonder if this works in other, in other places. And um, he tried it in all the different dungeons. And it turns out that after he tried it in the Fire Temple, it warped him to the Forest Temple, which was really crazy. Uh, right there I did a Navi dive to get uh, out of the forest early without beating the Deku Tree. Uh, I'm gonna be heading to Kakariko now, but uh, anyway, on with the story. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was kind of like, what the hell? You can go from the fire temple to the forest temple? That doesn't make any sense at all. And that night, we all like got on Skype or whatever, and, and like we all just spent hours and hours and hours trying to like mess with that glitch, because it was so weird. And. Uh, we went back to this older glitch that a Krite did with Froar's Wind, where you would warp to a certain place in the game, and it turns out we can use that to like warp to like all over the game, like because you would you would interrupt beating a dungeon, and then you would use that warp uh, in order to go to like somewhere entirely you're not supposed to, and there was crazy unpredictable results. You can actually warp directly into a beta cutscene that wasn't removed from the game, and uh, it's really like. Like, we were just like going crazy, and for a while we thought that we figured it out again because there was a way to warp from beating Dodongo's Cavern directly into the credits. So that was like, wow, we did it, we skipped Ganondorf, we got past the bottleneck. And some people, like, this was pretty crazy for some people because some people thought that, um, like, is this really beating the game? Like, he, he didn't even beat the final boss, you just like go right to the credits, but like, um, it was really interesting and really cool. And so for a while, like, oh, well, this is it, man. This is, like, the final thing. So ZFG, shout out to ZFG, he did, like, over 600 attempts and tried to get, like, a really, really good run of it. And he actually did. He got, like, a really strong record in that. And that run took about 47 minutes to beat the game from the beginning to warping to the credits. And so we were like, wow, you know, like, 47, that's, like, huge, right? And... <laughs> And then this run came along. Uh, basically, what happened was uh, <coughs> someone did the math. Uh, someone named Rob Dog was looking at the table of entrances in the game, and he did the math and he figured out that there was potential for an even faster way to beat the game. And then someone named Sock Folder tried it out, and it worked. And so that's kind of what this run's going to be. And you're going to see the new fastest way to beat the game. And it's almost like, once again, the game's finally been solved again, but it is Ocarina of Time, so, you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> who knows, really. Yeah, um, but this run depends on me getting the bottle, which is the reason I'm leaving the forest, and I'm not going to get the bottle to do anything other than just one small glitch that's just like a side effect. Uh, it's not even that important, but I do need it. Uh, to make this work. So the entire reason for leaving the forest uh, was simply to get the bottle, which is where I am now. And I'm collecting the chickens, and the fastest bottle is to collect them. Uh, and after I collect them, then we're gonna go 
on an adventure. <laughs> okay, so really quickly, alright guys, um, this run is literally so fast, I need to do this really quickly so that I can, you know, I have to get this plug in real quick. If you guys, you guys need to donate now, this, this particular 80% is going to be over really, really quickly, alright? Cosmo's going to do it real fast, so donate now, get these prizes, that's it, alright, okay. <laughs> Alright, you got time to donations? No. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> you actually do have a bit of time. I just save warp to go back to Link's house to get back to the forest, and that's all you need to know. Alright, just uh, cut me off whenever. Got um, both dollars from Stanley Arrow. Uh, hey guys, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Put this money towards Beard's Choice. Thank you, thank you. Uh, $30 from Taylor Harris. Thanks to everyone for helping out. A great cause. Awesome run towards whatever runner guy wants. Also, you should do the Iron Boot Challenge on Ganon, if it hasn't already happened. Sorry about that, isn't it? Uh, Thursday from Talon Bennett. Great job all. Haven't been able to sleep more than a few hours at the time this week. Put to the reader's choice. So that's uh, S and K for Pokemon Gold Rival. Uh, $30 from Phoenix Faison. So many wonderful prizes up for grabs during the Zelda block. I'd like $15 to go towards Mirror's Choice, and the other $15 to go towards Frank Z. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First dollars from William White's cop. Here's to watching Spy Shark run Virgil in Devil May Cry. Uh, Five dollars from uh, Joseph Wynn Zetson. I'm over budget for donations, but here's hoping to get the ball rolling on naming the Wind Waker file Octodad. Because Octodad is the real winner here. Uh, Fifteen dollars and twenty-three cents from Benjamin Thacker. This is the best charity program I've ever seen. I can only wish I was good at, as good at video games as you all. Put the money towards Regis Choice. Okay. Uh, $40 from Noah Lynn. You guys are amazing. Here's $40 for Mirage Choice and the Wind Waker file name. $25 from Kevin Cal uh, Calangelo. I forgot to put my previous two donations towards something, so let Cosmo pick where he wants these to go. Cosmo? Uh, any choices, Cosmo? Oh, um, Mirage Choice for Wind Waker file name. Thank you. Alright, so, um, really as you saw, I bought the shield, and now I'm heading into the Deku Tree, the first dungeon. Kind of as intended, except that I have a bottle of bugs in them. And that's the only real difference. And, uh, so now I'm gonna go through the tree. The, uh, Deku Tree is actually, like, the most technical dungeon. There's actually, like, a lot of very difficult, uh, things happening all at once. Uh, so right here, like, I'm gonna pause. oops, yeah, that's the first one. So, uh, I was supposed to pause the game and equip my stuff here and then if I pull out the stick right as I climb the vines it skips the text but unfortunately I ran into the text uh, that's a very minor time saver there's basically like a lot of minor time savers here uh, another thing you have to watch out for here is these skull slits on the wall I'm trying to avoid them looking at me and pretty good luck this guy's kind of yeah okay and then right here what I want to do is break the web and then get down to uh, the basement Oh, good. Okay, so nice. Nice. that's pretty hard. This is, I'm probably going to mess this one up. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, that's okay. I got other strats. Uh, right there, I tried to do this thing called flame storage, where you, like, detach your sword's hitbox on the, on the, uh, <laughs> on the torch, and then it lights after you pull out the stick later. It's pretty cool, so unfortunately I missed that, but not a big deal. And if you notice, I'm at really low health now. Um... I want to be at low health, so that was intentional. Okay, that was pretty good. Alright, so now I'm gonna go fight Goma, the boss. If you notice, I skipped getting the slingshot, and I skipped going around the first basement. I was able to skip the first basement by doing that recoil trick. Uh, this is sort of like the fastest way for Child Link to get to the basement. I think it's kind of funny with how broken this game is. There's still no way to like clip through the first vine on the first floor. You have to go up and break it as Child Link. Adult Link can get through with the hook shot, but... Yeah, so here's Goma, and there's something really interesting here. I want to die and kill Goma at the same time, because you see that stone slab that just closed? That needs to be open, and since it closed, the only way for me to like get it to go back up is to leave the room. And the fastest way for me to leave the room is to die. So I'm going to kill Goma and die at the same time, on the same frame. Okay, so now Goma's going to die, Link's going to die, and it's going to send me back to the beginning of the tree. And then I have to make my way back into the boss room again. 
Uh, and the reason I'm even going here in the first place is because of the blue warp that spawns after Goma dies. Uh, that is the key to beating this game ridiculously fast. And keep in mind, this method, like I was saying, this took years and years, over 10 years, like 13 years to discover how to do. So, uh, you know, you never know what you'd find in games if you put enough time into them. So now to get down, I'm doing this thing called the Mega Side Hop. It's a one frame side hop thing. You recoil and you keep a bunch of speed. That was... Okay, yeah, I could have gone a little bit faster right there. I jump slash too early, but like that was still pretty fast. Uh, so as you can see, like the deck is pretty technical. It's like you wouldn't expect that out of a Zelda title, especially a 3D Zelda title, to be fast-paced like that. But this is where the true magic's gonna happen. And right here, I'm gonna re-catch the bugs in my bottle. And I'm doing that so I can do a glitch called Ocarina Items, which lets me like play a fake Ocarina with one of my items. And I'm also going to be in a specific position. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then right here, target, turn. Okay. So, what that did was, it took me... <laughs> So Ganondorf's dead now. <laughs> we bypass <laughs> we bypassed needing the light arrows and all that. And I guess I should explain this now. So the way this works is there's these blue warps, right? What they do is they send you to a certain location and they also set if there's gonna be a cutscene happening or not. And basically what happened was you're supposed to step into them and then you lose control of Link. It plays the cutscene, it takes Link up, then it sets the value that there's gonna be a cutscene and it the warp takes you to the correct location. In this case, it should have taken me to Kokiri Forest and played the cutscene of the Deku Tree giving me the Kokiri's Emerald. Instead, what happened was I did that glitch called Ocarina Items, and the way that works is, uh, for whatever reason, after you have bugs in your hand and you're in the air, if you press the button for the bug and then you press another button, Link will like play the item that you pressed second like it's an ocarina. It doesn't make any sense really, uh, but that glitch is crucial because it lets you maintain control of Link after the warp tries to take you away. And what's happening is like I got on that pillar in the room and like got on a specific part of the pillar and did a certain like movement pattern so that when I backflipped, the frame Link's feet hit the ground, which would trigger ocarina items is also the same frame that triggers the blue warp carrying me up. So what happens is I'm in the warp as it's activating with ocarina items. And that's important because there's a B button that says cancel. So what ha so the way it, the way it works is I wait until a certain part of that little cutscene and then I cancel it. And as I cancel it, the blue warp starts counting up from zero. There's an internal timer in the game. It counts from zero up to 101. Every frame it ticks up one. So after 101 frames, it would take me to the cutscene because the animation's over. But what happens is I like move in a certain way through the room so that I get the blue warp off the camera at a certain time. And when the blue warp's far enough off the camera, the N64 tries to like conserve memory. So the warp itself is like no longer an object that's considered important enough to be loaded because of its position like on the camera. And when that happens, that timer that's counting up to 101 freezes. And uh, at that point, um, hold on here. I gotta, I gotta kill these guys. Uh oh. Oh, I'm actually a little unhealthy here. I gotta wash out. Okay, that was a little more scary than it needed to be. The uh, stick does more damage. Yeah. So. Um, it's basically that timer, it pauses when I'm in a certain part of the room, and I know what the number is at. Well, I don't know the actual number, but I know it's at a certain number that I want. And then I can basically tell where I am in the hallway, like, based on where I walked. And uh, <laughs> when I do that, I can, like, turn the camera and load the warp for an instant, which will get it to tick up a couple more times as I do, like, the 180 camera switch. And that gets the warp to be the correct number, so that when I walk through the door, and I have to walk through the correct part of the door. But when I walk through the door, it counts up to the final numbers and hits 101 as its value. And 
on the exact frame that it hits 101, it loads the Deku Tree basement. And this is kind of how this whole wrong warping thing works, is because it knows it's supposed to load a cutscene, uh, and it also needs to load the basement. And the way they did it, uh, the way they handle cutscenes after you beat a dungeon, is that uh, it adds a value to the to the location. So instead of Kokiri Forest, it's like Kokiri Forest plus five, five being the cutscene it needs to play, and. Uh, so what happened was instead of loading Kokiri Forest plus five, it loaded Deku Tree Basement uh, plus that number, and there's no cutscene in the Deku Tree Basement. So when it adds five or whatever, it goes past the basement and hits the next area in the game. And it just so happens that the areas in the game, like internally, are all kind of in sort of a random order. And it just so happens that the basement of the Deku Tree afterwards is part of the tower collapse, which is past Ganondorf. So it put me in that room. And then when I left the room, it realized I was outside the tower, and that's and because it was my first time ever outside the tower, it played the cutscene because it thought I just killed Ganondorf. So Gan oh, Ganondorf dies in front of you, child Link, and you walk through the escape and you get down to the bottom, and then here's the showdown with Ganon. And this is, you know, it's faster than warping into the credits, which is possible, like I said earlier, but uh, it's hard to say if this run's ever going to be any faster. There is a crazy theoretical tool-assisted-only method of going down the tower. You'd have to get the slingshot and then shoot the uh, ladder down in the Deku Tree, and then when you wrong warp here, uh, one of the iron bars are open because it preserves the dungeon's temporary flags when you wrong warp. So one of the bars would be open, but the problem is the only way to fall down far enough without the game detecting that you jumped off the tower is to get hit by a falling rock in midair. And you'd have to do that twice, and all the rocks are randomly generated. So <laughs> there's no way for a human being to do that skip with the slingshot thing. But uh, that would be like a theoretical, tool-assisted only way of doing this faster. Also, if you notice, when I was fighting the stall post, I used this glitch called the Infinite Sword Glitch, which I'm sure you saw many times in Runner Guys Run. Uh, it basically lets the sword be always out and active. And I use the Deku Stick, because it's actually as powerful as the Master Sword, and that's true of Ganon as well. So I'll be using the stick on Ganon as he knocks away my puny little sword. There's one kind of tense moment right at the beginning of this fight. I have to get Infinite Sword Glitch off of Navi targeting Ganon's head. If I don't get it, I'm gonna run like hell. Because uh, Ganon will kill me. I only have one shot at getting it. If I don't get it though, I can get it again. But I'll have to be kind of careful about it. So, I wanna just kind of focus right here. It's also extra hard too, because I have to use the C-Stick to hit C up and it's frame perfect. Yeah, I guess so. Got it. <laughs> So yeah, it's supposed to take 10 hits, because you're supposed to use like whatever weapons, and then like every, like the boss Ganon has like a table of all your items, or like all your weapons against him, and they all do one damage, but they never change the value of the Deku Stick, because you're not supposed to be able to use them, so it does full Master Sword damage. Uh... Uh, you could skip Deku Stick, but there's no point. <laughs> so, he knocked away the real Master Sword, and I'm able to pick it up and use it to finish off Ganon. Master Sword's the only weapon that will work in, like, the final blow. So it's convenient that it gets knocked away, even though I never had it. And I can pick it back up. <laughs> <laughs> and time. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good time. So even though you are a child, in this, I think it still concerns you having the Master Sword for that second half of the fight? Yeah, like usually, even if you have the Master Sword in your inventory and your Child Link, you can't equip it. But because it's on the ground and you just pick it up, it automatically well, equips it. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad. So basically, it concerns you as having it, even though you don't really have it. Because you picked it up. 
Yeah. Very nice commentary for that one. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I like your history a lot. Yeah. Just give